We have a, ourselves a member of uh, Team Texas here in this here game. I guess we're gonna hop on in with a big ol' yeehaw! We got Spawner in the upper left hand corner of Ghost River. A big ol' Harstum. Look at him, you know what? He might be the member of Team Texas, but I think both players here deserve a big ol' yeehaw! As his opponent in the upper right hand corner is none other than Team Liquid's Skillis. Another Texan. Everybody here is an honorary Texan for the time being. So I hope you all brought your yees, brought your haws, and you're ready for some good old gaming. We got ourselves a PvP here. Now, I've been asked to cast this as Paul McCartney, but off the back of the yee-haw, I don't know, that might be difficult uh, to get into Paul McCartney. Uh, Paul did, I believe, sing Rocky Raccoon, so maybe I can just... I can just say this is Paul McCartney doing his best Rocky Raccoon accent. Is that is that how that works? Way up there in the mining hills there lived a young boy named Rocky Raccoon. That's a banger right there. You know it. Also, I ain't got a very good Paul McCartney accent. I don't really know what Paul McCartney sounds like speaking very much. I just remember there was one interview he did on Saturday Night Live with uh, Chris Farley. That was an excellent interview. The classic. Uh, and we got ourselves a PvP here, a little Harstum versus Skillis. Now I notice here, I mentioned in the last series uh, that Harstum has been opening up with his gateways, pine line, and cybercore in this kind of formation. And I was wondering why we, we saw Psionic opening this way as well in the last series. Uh, still not too sure why, and it looks like Skillis is opening up with what I would call the more standard opening. So I do wonder why the setup this way here for Harstum, if it offers any particular advantage or if it is merely uh, more aesthetically pleasing or just uh, a little bit easier to make sure your gateways and your cyber core are all set up in the right spot. I don't know. But we do see a triple century opening here for Harstum and a couple of adepts trying to sneak their way in here for Skillis, trying to be a little bit cheeky. Oh, they thought about it. They thought about it. Two more devs coming across as well. Hallucinated Phoenix going to come in and scout. Sees the Twilight Council on the way. But four adepts now going to threaten to shade up here. I don't know if three sentries and two star or one stalker is going to be enough to stop this. The adepts don't do nearly as well against the sentries as they used to, but they're still going to get one. Now they're threatening to shade back down to the low ground, and it looks like they will finish that shade. Get one more probe. Oh, can this one finish it off? Mm. Oh, my God. Gets the last shot. It does, however, look like the rest of the Adepts are either going to die here, or I guess it'll die up in the main base. Gets one more probe, though, so it's going to be four probes for four Adepts, but also a sentry mixed in there. All together, not too bad for Harstum, I think. Ends up a couple of workers behind, but I think that's within reason. Kills four adepts. That's a lot of early game production there for Skillis. That is now not going to be particularly useful. And we see Harstum's going to try to take advantage of this and move across the map. Put some pressure on. Blink is on the way for both players, so Harstum's going to know roughly where Skillis' Blink is since their Twilight Councils were at the same time. Ooh, Forceville trying to go down and block that Stalker. It will get taken down, but Skillis is one as well. Just a little trades here. These players are very good at micro. I expect the uh, the micro wars to go pretty pretty well between them. Relatively even trades here. 
Unless somebody gets caught out of position. This one looked good for Skillis initially, but some reinforcements came over for Harstom. Oh, and Skillis' reinforcements a little bit late there. That's some excellent micro for Harstom. That was a really nice trade. He has definitely traded much better in this game so far. And now, Skills wanted to take this third base, but he's got to pull on back. Ooh, that's a dicey move there. That's a dicey move. Blink about to finish for both players. Harstom going to have to blink a couple extra seconds. It's not going to matter, though. Oh, Harstom does miss a blink there on one of his stalkers. Wow, loses a second stalker. So now it's uh, spinning back to Skillis' direction a little bit. I do love when stalkers fight each other and then nothing dies. Oh, but Arson going to dive forward. He's going to grab one or two stalkers there. But still, just the even trades. Kind of what we expect to see as the game continues on. Nobody's getting hyper-aggressive here. Nobody's got any big advantages. Uh, I will say Harsom's plus one is a bit earlier. That's been consistent in his PvP so far today. But charge is already on the way for Skillis. So he's going to have those earlier charge lots, and they can really add to a stalker versus stalker fight. You get a handful of charge lots out front to tank, and your stalkers can do some real good damage because of that. Also, run by is very powerful. I want you all to know that the cat jumped into his box and knocked it over. And it was really cute and silly. And now he's just sitting in his box that's tipped over on the side. He's, he's a little sweetheart, that cat. Uh, there's charge on the way now for Harstom. Temple Archives coming up here for Skillis. Nobody putting any pressure on just yet. I imagine once charge finishes, Skillis might be trying to get uh, a warp prism in or some run buys going. This can be very, very good. I guess I could do a bit of a dual cast with myself if I wanted to also cast like Paul McCartney. I could I could see if Paul has anything good to say here. Paul, Paul, you got anything for me? Well, what I'd say to these players is all you really need is love. You know, um, the the more the more you give, the more you get. The the love you take is equal to the love you make, mate. Ah, uh, yeah. Thanks, Paul. Uh, I've completely lost whatever accents I was going for just then. They're, they're now gone forever. But that was a word from Paul McCartney for this cast. I know he sounds a bit different than, than you've heard him sound before there, but... Was, uh, you know, every, every now and then we all, we all feel a bit different. Right, Paul? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I notice when I do my Paul McCartney voice, my eyebrows go up. I feel like that helps. It's all about the physicality. <laughs> How does your face look when you do the accent? It's important. Uh, Skills has a bit of a proxy gate down here. Actually, a double pylon proxy gate, which Harstom is close to spotting, but not quite. And that could allow for some of those uh, run buys I was talking about. We have that warp prism on the top side, but Harstom with a really nicely placed stalker here. Gonna be able to spot this warp prism. Yeah, a couple stalkers nearby the natural as well. Really nice defense there. Stop the prism from coming in at the same time. Harstom pushing the front a bit. He's an opportunity to get a little aggressive as some zealot Let's try to run by. They do not seem to get anything done. We have static defense there for Skillis. Ooh, big Zealot Warp in here. I'm gonna get on top of that pylon, but Arsum's got a decent amount of stuff trying to defend. Might need to pull back to that shield battery. 
Well, looks like maybe he's more focused on the front as he wants to keep this pressure going. Does have to warp in back at home. That shield battery helping out a bit. There's a cannon here as well. Zealot's getting sent over here for Harsh. I'm going to try to take out a pylon or two. Kind of an awkward engagement angle here. Very uh, charge lot Archon heavy. As we see the recall to get. It looks like the prism back with a few Zealots in it. Skills wants everything he can have here to defend as Harsh is continuing to pressure. Uh, despite Skills have, having quite a bit more army supply at the moment. God, it's, it's really just in Zealots, isn't it? 46 Zealots out here for Skillis. It is going to make these Archons super huge value for Harsum and maybe something that Skillis wants to try to target down. I mean, Skillis has his own Archons, though. Yeah, it's the, the Immortals and Stalkers here of Harsum are taking up a lot of his supply that are, it's just not going to be super helpful against this many charge lots. All going to be the Archons, which are just kind of Archoning. I don't... I don't know. I feel like Skillis is just going to have way too many charge lots here for Harsum to deal with. And that seems to be the case as this engagement is incredibly straightforward. Skillis just wins the engagement and wins the game. Despite there being so much action in that game, it really just comes down to that fight at the end. Skillis is so zealot heavy, which can be really bad in some situations. But uh, Harsum's army just couldn't quite handle it. Harsum also had the smaller army by the time of that fight. And I think charge lots do a lot better when they are the bigger army. That's why in like small skirmishes, a charge lot warping is huge. If you just have like a handful of reinforcements there, charge lots are so tough, so tough to deal with. But if it is maxed army versus maxed army, the charge lots can really struggle. It's kind of an interesting thing. There, If there's more of them, they're great. If there's less of them, they can kind of suck. <laughs> it definitely sounded Liverpoolish. Good. I'm glad. Excellent. Sometimes my uh, my accents don't quite work. But it's always nice when they do. God, this the cat has destroyed this box. I'm gonna have to try to show you guys what he's done to this box. It's been a few weeks now. It's, honestly, it's been like a month. I feel like this box has been in here and he has just absolutely destroyed it. It's insane. Uh, almost as badly as this guy destroyed his opponent in the last game. Spawning in the upper right-hand corner of Crimson Court, we have Team Liquid's Skillis. And his opponent in the lower left for the Shopify Rebellion. It's Harstum. So I had to segue from the destroyed box into the game, so I went for the destroyed his opponent angle, even though it was like a really close game. <laughs> It did feel like Harston was, uh, he got, he got real, real aggressive and he just kind of was, he was very committed to that aggression. I don't know. It's always really interesting to me in a PVP. Certain players and maybe, I don't know. I don't even know what it is. Like certain players or certain matchups or certain maps. We'll see it. Sometimes they go into heavy charge on Archon like the last game. Sometimes it's pure Blink Stalker. Uh, sometimes they're mixing in Immortals. Sometimes they're going Disruptors, like Blink Stalker Disruptor. I always find it so interesting when players make those choices. And like, why, why some games is it straight to charge? 
And then we see Skillis with just 46 charge lots and like three blink stalkers. And then some games, charge lots are only made for run buys or warp ins. And it's just other than that, it's just pure blink stalker and then into disruptor. It's just interesting to me because if there was like one clearly better answer, that's what we'd see all the time. But we see such a mix of these things. Depending, again, I really do feel like it's the players, but also the maps and how they choose to play the maps. Very interesting. Also, both players last game went for charge. But you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, I really feel like Glaive the Depths could have benefited Harstom a lot there. We've seen the Glaive the Depths just absolutely manhandle charge lots, and Skills was so heavy on charge lots that I think, like, Glaive the Depths with the Stalkers and Archons that Harstom had. I feel like those could have been really, really sick. I'd love to see somebody go for that. Um, I was casting Classic versus Creator a couple weeks ago, and man, Creator just, he just got absolutely blasted by those Adepts. It was just, like the game was so even in so many ways. The supplies were very close. Uh, honestly, the fight started out better for Creator, but Classic's Glaive Adepts just straight up. <laughs> it just murdered those charge lots. And so that's like another interesting layer. Like, why don't we see that more often? I know they're a little bit more expensive. Not quite as good for for like the run by kind of set it forget it thing. Although, if you can get two Glade the Depths in and just target down a couple of probes, they can go down super fast. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see. It does look like Harsom's getting a bit aggressive this game. He's got a forward pylon. Uh, he's putting down the Robo now, but it's just going to be the two gates. And he just wants to try to put some pressure on, it seems. So with the shield battery here, I think Skillis is going to be more than fine. Meanwhile, Skillis has a couple of adepts on the other side of the map. Threatening to shade in. Oh, it doesn't look like they're going to make it very far. R.I.P. I don't know if Skillis has spotted that pylon. Yeah, he did. He did. Knows that pylon is there. Arsene, I'm going to get into the Twilight Council as well, but getting an immortal lot first to defend. If any cheekiness, Skillis might throw at him with these Blink Stalkers. I was just going to ask if Harstam had scouted, but he's coming in with the Phoenix now. Gets the confirmed scout and everything here. Sees the extra gateway go down. Skillas might be planning to get a little aggressive here. Doesn't have, at least as far as I know, a forward pylon. Oh my god, the fake war prism? That fake war prism is so sick? What? That's crazy. I mean, it's just going to dissipate here. And I, I think Skills already knows it's fake, but I kind of love it. Harson once again quicker into the forge. Going to give him a quicker plus one. Didn't really come into play last game, but feels like something that could be important. Skill is going to go ahead and mine through the gold, take that third base. It looks like Harstom is heading towards the triangle third. Some interesting differences here. Does also mean Harstom could try to break down some rocks or maybe even just blink over the gold minerals here. Head towards his opponent's base if he finds out it's there. Never mind, he's already found out it's there. And there's no ifs about it. You know, it would be really interesting to see some Colossi. Colossi are some of the least seen units in PvP. 
And usually it's just Blink Stalker Disruptor if you're going for the Robo Bay, but I have seen Colossi occasionally. It is something that happens every now and then. Be fun to see that. I don't think we're going to see that from either of these players, though. We're heading towards the exact same army compositions once again. Temple Archives, Charge, all sorts of good stuff. Uh, I will say Skills has still not started an upgrade. Doesn't even have a Forge on the field. And I feel like that is uh, a mistake here for Skillis. He is going to be down. There's the Forge starting up. He's going to be down a full upgrade. If Harstam is on point with this plus two starting up, I mean, he's going to be very significantly ahead in the upgrades for a long time. Now yeah, starts up plus two before the Forge is even done for Skillis. Both players sign up their fourth bases. The forward fourths are going to be very near each other. If I if I go for the full zoom out there on the same screen. Oh, and Skill is diving down the ramp here. Blink underneath that prism. Harsom trying to take advantage of this, but going to lose all of his stalkers for that. Zealot's running forward. Charge is not done yet for Harstam, so Skill is going to be able to kite these zealots very easily. And I feel like that fight started off well for Harstam, but kind of turned towards Skillis. Who's going to blink underneath Harstam's prism here. And now try to pull the army away with these blink stalkers. But charge is now done. So Zealot's able to get on top of this a little bit. But oh no. Some of these units get caught. But do they get caught? I, I can't tell. Yeah, okay. The Zealot's going to come in here. The Archon goes down. The Immortals will be able to get out of there with a recall. Harstam at least saves those. The army winds up very similar. This fourth base, I think, is going to be able to be held here by Harstam. Skillis is forced to pull back at least a little bit. There's still one Archon left here for Harsom that can help against the charge lots. Now Skillis has his own Archons again. Very similar across the board. The one big thing here is Harsom has plus one finished. I think plus two and plus one here for Skillis are going to finish around the same time. So Harsom should be able to maintain that, that one upgrade lead for quite a while here. There you go. You got 10 seconds available for Skillis to fight this with even upgrades. <laughs> and it is now gone. Alright, so I'm waiting for that plus two to finish. He's going to dive up the ramp immediately. Feeling like he's got a chance. Here he is up in the army supply. A lot of zealots pushing forward. Ah, this feels like a really nice fight for Harstam. Not any static defense ready for Skillis just yet. That shield battery a little too late. And I think Harstam is just going to push through this. He's going to gun down the shield battery. And this fourth base is now dead. Skillis... He's in a really rough spot. So rough, in fact, that he is just going to tap out as Harstam ties the series up one to one. Cat is being a total goofball. I, I wanted to go show you the box, but he is now in the box. Playing with pieces of the box. <laughs> My man loves boxes. What can I say? You know, honestly, I relate. All right, I'm going to grab some water while we wait for uh, Skillets to join the lobby here.
I wish I could have a camera in the kitchen to show you what he is doing. Because it's so cute. Uh, we're still just waiting for Skillis right now. Just checking the replay out, seeing what went wrong. Oh. All right. Skillis has joined the lobby. All right, took us a second, but we got here. Game number three. We're on Oceanborn, spawning in the lower right-hand corner. It's so funny. Sorry, he's dead. <laughs> As the score, Zomgrub said one one, and then instead I was just like, I'm out. <laughs> this skills is so sad. So sad. I agree. I agree. Uh, anyways. Yeah, spawning in the lower right-hand corner of Oceanborn, we have Shopify Rebellion's Harstum. And he's, of course, up against Team Liquid's Skillis. Again, Harstum likes the likes the pylon close to the ramp. Skillis likes his pylon a little bit back from the ramp. I would I don't know. Are there any good Protoss players in chat that know the answer to this? Like genuinely, why does Harstum wall like this? Do we have any Harstum enjoyers that have asked him this question? Because this to me, this is the standard wall. And I have seen pylons like this before. I feel like it was usually on this side though. And the only reason that I could see why people would do that, and they used to do this quite a bit, was to get a shield battery on the low ground without needing the pylon on the low ground. So you could have the shield battery down there to defend your Nexus earlier uh, without committing the third pylon down on the low ground as well. But I haven't seen Harstum do that in a single one of these games. So I don't know, maybe this is like, Theoretically, if he was being attacked, he would use this for a low ground uh, shield battery. I don't know if a shield battery could even go here from this pylon, though, because this is the other side of the ramp. Like, if the pylon's here, shield battery can go, like, in here or back here, or I think you can you could clear these and put it here. This pylon, I guess it, pr it probably would reach here, and again, if you clear these here. But again, we haven't seen... I, at least I have not seen Harstum put down a single shield battery on the low ground where he would have needed the pylon here. So I, I don't know. I'm confused. I am the confuse. Uh, in any case, Harstum's base is up a little bit earlier, actually a good bit earlier than Skillis's. Skillis instead going for the Stargate first. We'll see if Harstum can get the full scout on. He's just scouted the front so far. I am here in the shadows. I am here in the shadows. From the shadows I come. Base is under attack. Yeah, gets the scout on the Stargate, sees the Corona boosting Oracle coming out. On the Twilight Council behind this for Skillis. So Skillis is just gonna try to get some harassment done. We haven't seen any Oracles yet in this series. 
the skill is changing it up a little bit for us. Oracle trying to get that probe, doesn't quite get it. There's no shield battery in the main. That is going to be a dead probe at the very least. Stark is trying to push in and kill the shield battery again, but yeah, they got to be careful getting out of there. Second Oracle coming across now. Ah, but Skillis is, or uh, Harsten rather, is on point with the defense. Skillis not able to get really any damage on with these oracles a double oracle opener it's just gotten two probe kills but skills going into a very quick third base behind this blink is pretty much even for the two of them so no advantage there arston while he had the earlier second nexus is going to have the later third nexus honestly skills has been mining more i mean honestly 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 this is just pretty much even hasn't really made much of a difference. The earlier Nexus, the Oracles. It's kind of an even game. Once again, earlier... Oh, no, this is Skillis. I keep getting confused. I don't know. For some reason, I keep thinking Skillis is in the upper left and Harsten in the lower right. No, that is correct. Ah. I keep getting the players backwards. This is what happened. This is Fear Dragon's fault from making me cast the, the players with the wrong names on Friday. I'm blaming Fear Dragon. Um, Skillis this game has the earlier plus one, although it does look like it's going to be... Just a few seconds, not a massive difference like we saw last game. But there's an interesting change. Oh my god, the hallucinated probe just triggered the stasis ward. Wild. Wild. Um, yeah, not going to be the massive difference we saw in the last game for that plus one. But the interesting change that Skillis who sat in that replay for like two or three minutes last game, might have just seen, okay, I was so far behind in the upgrades, my forge was super late, and might have identified that as at least one of the most important and I guess easily fixable problems for this game, and ends up with the earlier plus one this time. I might be able to take advantage of that. Moving out here around with his stalkers. A little bit of blink micro. Skills could try to jump on this immortal if he was feeling real brave. Oh, the fake immortal here for Harstom. Skills gonna come in. See if he spots the fake immortal. I don't know, there's two real immortals here. Some stasis traps going down for Skills as well. It's cute. Harstom does have an observer right here spotting that though, so not likely to get too much done. Yeah, send the Blink Stalker forward to trigger one of those traps. Both players do have fourth bases coming up here. Harstom's though quite a bit later as Skillis' posturing has kept him busy and kept him unable to take this base, so he's kind of forced to take the other one. Oh, there is a third stasis trap. Catches a lot of stalkers. Harstom, so good on those first two traps, but misses the third one. I still feel like he's got too many charge lots here for these stalkers to really want to engage right now. Uh, 
Again, very even game at the moment. Honestly, not much has been lost either side. So even. Skillis' plus two, though, is going to be a good bit earlier than Harstum's. Looks like Harstum, or uh, Skillis might have been a little bit more on the Chrono Boost on his upgrades. Again, really focusing on that this game. I feel like he diagnosed that as the big problem last game. And as such, trying to make up for it this time. And that plus two finishing up, going to give him a big advantage in these fights. Now it is just pure Blink Stalker against this Charge Lot Archon Immortal Stalker army out of Harstums. This is kind of what I was talking about. Like, why? Why this game is skill is going from Blink Stalker? He is going to be able to take very efficient trades, theoretically. Although, as we see, it is dead even right now. Every time these Stalkers get a bit of damage done, a Stalker seems to die, so... Oh, oh, Skillis. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Skillis making a big mistake there. I do not know what happened. Those Stalkers move commanding through, and then the Blink really not working. And suddenly, Harstum finds himself with the ability to push forward here. A lot of Zealots have been caught in these uh, Stasis Traps. Looks like 10 or so have been caught here. But he still has the Prism alive. He's still pushing forward. Still three Immortals here as well to keep pressure onto these Stalkers. Skills with a bit of a blunder there. Puts himself in a dangerous spot, but oh, now these Zealots come in here. They're going to get caught separately. These ones looking for a run by. There is a cannon here, but no shield battery. Oh, and the pylon's going to get targeted down. That's really nice for Skills. Could get a lot of damage done. Actually, supply blocks Harsome. So he couldn't even warp in if he wanted to over there. Same time, though, Harstum going to push up the ramp. Super shield battery here on the defensive for Skillis. Going to help him quite a bit, and he's warped in a lot of zealots for the front lines. 16 probes went down in the meantime on Harstum's side of the map. So while Harstum is taking decent trades against the armies here, he's lost a lot of his economy back at home. So as efficient as these trades have been, Skillis is going to be able to catch up economically fairly quickly because of this advantage. Honestly, he's already had quite an advantage in this game. That's crazy. Yeah, usually the Blink Stalker is supposed to be cost efficient, but it's like the opposite here. Skillis is being cost inefficient, but making up for it with all this damage on the other side of the map. <laughs> and also having the earlier bases. So many Zealots here for Skillis now as well. He was pure Blink Stalker before, but now it's a, a much more even split. However, the Archons of Harstum are going to be able to blast through the Zealots on the left-hand side. Stalkers blink forward onto the Immortals. They'll grab one. They might be able to get the second one. Be a lot of dead stalkers though as Skillis' army supply is dropping despite having the earlier plus one armor it seems like it might not matter the army composition of Harstum I think was just a little bit stronger there and is a really nice engagement the units fighting the exact units they wanted to fight for Harstum and Harstum takes a massive supply lead now as he's also killing workers he's gonna go for the recall to clean this up and he will be able to clean this up but this is still very painful for Skillis who's now down in workers, up in upgrades though, pretty significantly ahead in upgrades. Although well, plus three attack about to finish here, but it looks like Harstum, or Skills rather, went for a double forge. So he's got plus two armor cooking. Harstum's gonna pull back, but he is up 25 supply right now. He's ahead in workers. Got a fifth base done. Uh, he's got the bigger army by a good margin, and also, again, Kind of the, the stronger army here with these Archons uh, and Immortals. Going to add a lot of power to this army composition that the Blink Stalkers might have trouble contending with. But Blink Stalkers obviously have mobility in their favor. Again, though, every time they pick off a unit or two, a Stalker or two goes down. And these trades have still been very, very good for Harstum. Despite the economics being bad for Harstum until recently. And now, with Better, with a better economy, it feels like Harstum should be able to, to start pulling ahead. The one thing Skills really has going for him is the plus two armor. I don't know if that's going to be enough on its own, though. He, do, he does have a lot of shield batteries here. He's going to turn on an overcharge for the shield batteries and try to take a more cost-efficient trade than he has been so far in this game. The Immortal's going to make that difficult. Still three Immortals here. This one... Takes a lot of damage from that Stalker Volley, but stays alive. Oh, and Zealot's getting in at the same time. 
Getting a lot of probe damage here. Now they're going to run into the main base as well. As Harson continues pushing into the fourth, sending the Stalkers back. And now hitting the cannon and static defenses here. Harstam now taking a 50 supply lead, and it feels like skills, despite those earlier upgrades coming into play, the pure blink stalker just not working out super well for him, not able to take the cost efficient trades. Even with all the economic damage he was doing, Harstam's army just, just being stronger here. The Archons against the Zealots, the Immortals against the Stalkers, and GG gets called. Harstam takes the 2-1 victory over Skillis.